Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Open Line. Glad you are with us again Wednesday, May 20th. We're talking about is in-person voting safe uh, in the midst of the pandemic? We, of course, will be voting in November in a presidential election, but we also in Tennessee have a primary election coming up in August. And early voting starts in July. We are talking with Representative London Lamar, Democrat from Memphis, and she would like to see uh, universal absentee ballots in Tennessee. And so we're going to start taking some calls now. Let's go to Michael. Uh, hello, Michael. Go right ahead. Hey, good evening, Ben, and hello to the representative uh, for her intelligent uh, uh, perspective on all of this. We've, we've got an administration, uh, a, a not a very smart one, uh, the Trump administration, who's going to do everything they can to make sure that his uh, authoritarian uh, regime stays in place and a lot of these governors and other uh, uh, Republican politicians as well. If you'll notice, if you do a, uh, uh, a study, they show that mostly the Republicans are trying to do anything as far as not allowing for mail-in ballots. They're trying to do anything as far as suppressing votes. We know what they've done over the last 10 to 15 years as far as identification uh, and how that's been struck down in several states and by the Supreme Court of, uh, of different things to try to hold people back from voting. I think that mail-in voting shouldn't be for people who are 60 and above. I'm in my mid-50s. Uh, I've always voted since I was 18. Uh, I believe that mail-in voting is secure. Nobody can try to hack into our mailing system. That's why we need to have people to uh, call in to their uh, federal representatives, congressmen, senators, and also let your governors know and your state legislators know that that we want to be able to uh, vote by mail, uh, that we see the potential for Russian and other foreign uh, countries to try to infiltrate our, our voting uh, system. And so we need to make sure that the Postal Service is well funded. And this new stimulus bill that uh, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats have uh, brought to the floor is supposed to make sure that we have plenty of funding to make sure that our United States Postal System it's going to be stable enough to handle the influx of mail-in ballots if that comes to be. And I think okay. that we need to make sure that that's a number one priority because Trump wants to see our postal system fail so that we won't be able to have a postal system to be able to mail-in ballots. And you guys have a good evening. Thank all you. right, Michael, thank you very much. Um, all right, Representative, there's a lot there. There's a lot there in that call. But the thing that kind of stood out to me is will the Postal Service be able to handle this? Uh, do you feel like they could handle university, universal absentee uh, ballots? Absolutely. Our Postal Service is well equipped um, and it can definitely handle um, this new level of mail that will come through if we implement this policy. And if the federal government does its part under the leadership of Trump, if it does its part and support and continue to fund our, our postal service, they can definitely handle this. And, you know, when people submit universal absentee ballots, it's not as if they're going to all submit them on one day. You know, it depends on, you know, when you request it and when you put it in the mail. But they definitely have the capacity to do this. And we want to make sure that we unapologetically support our postal workers as well. And again, go over how it would work. So let's say, uh, you know, how, how, how soon do I need to know if I'm going to vote? Uh, universal, if I'm going to vote by absentee ballot, uh, you couldn't just wait for the last day. You would need to know by when. I mean, how, how would that work if people were going to do that? You can request universal absentee ballots now. So while the law currently states that you can be over, if you're over 60 right now, you can request a universal absentee ballot at this moment. Um, for those of us who are under 60, um, we will have to wait to see if um, this can happen before early voting begins. But there is still plenty of time. Um, for those of you over the age of 60, you can go ahead and put in your requests now and get it done. But how soon you, you would have to do it, what's the cutoff? I mean, what, what's the latest you could request a, an absentee ballot and have it count? This, from my understanding, your absentee ballot has to be in before Election Day. Okay. And that is August 6th. All right. And so, Naya, what you're talking about is in the August primary. And then we'll go through this all again in November. Um, in November. Yeah. Absolutely. Right now, our main focus is to get through the uh, August election. Um, we don't know how our how 
everything will move forward in November is too soon to call. Um, we don't know if there's going to be a vaccine in place, if we were drastically reduced the number of coronavirus cases by the end. But right now, we know that the August election is approaching rapidly. And so right now, there hasn't been anything in place to show that there's additional protections against the coronavirus besides basic PPE and social distancing. And so it's more critical for us to make sure we at least put universal absentee ballot in for August. And ideally, I would love to see it also be utilized in November as well. So the two lawsuits that are out there, are they just about August right now? There, if my understanding, there for all the elections in 2020, but I can follow up with you later to find out more specifically if it's just for this year or if it's going forth forever. Okay, let's go to Peggy. Hello, there Peggy. Is there for all the elections in and it's tough when I come to you. You need to turn down your TV. Everyone, please turn I down know. your TV. Okay, great. But Peggy, okay, what's on your mind? Well, I, th 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 my thing is. I'm over 60. I'm over 65 and everything. Uh, if people can go out and stand at bars, stand at Walmart, stand at Home Depot, and want this, and stand out in front of the Capitol and protest for this city to open up, they can stand in a line to vote. And what, what this lady said, she doesn't know. I've got my mail-in thing uh, telling me uh, uh, telling me about the, uh, the August voting and when the, uh, uh, all this stuff is co coming out, they asked to extend the early voting. It starts July 17th through August 1st. To be and do the absentee stuff, they have from May 8th to July 30th is the cutoff date for absentee ballots. Okay. All right. And everything. And she needs to know, know what she's talking about before she opens her mouth. Okay, so Peggy has some concerns. Um, she is saying something. I'll ask about that second part. I don't, she's talking about the dates and you need to, I'll ask you about that in a second. But the other thing she's saying is something we're seeing on Facebook. We're also uh, putting this on our Facebook page. People saying, if, if you can stand in line at Lowe's, uh, you can stand in line to vote. And she kind of she said that. What, what do you think of that? I, I understand her concerns about people still being out. But the, the reality of the situation is most people aren't going out. Most people are only leaving their homes to get essential items. Um, the bars are not at the capacity that they were prior to the coronavirus. Businesses and restaurants and bars are constantly losing money. Um, and, and at the end of the day, if they want to go out and risk your lives, they have that right too. Again, by pushing for universal absentee, it is giving people the option. If you want to still go and vote in person, you can go vote in person. Just like if you want to go out to the bars and risk your life, you can go out to the bars and risk your life. But for those of us who want to be responsible and protect ourselves from catching the coronavirus, we should have that option. Just like most of us are not at the bars, we're not out at the stores, we're not out in the public. The vast majority of Americans and citizens in Tennessee are being responsible by protecting themselves and staying at home. Now, she also mentioned some dates. Um, I don't fully understand what she was asking there, but I think she was um, questioning, challenging you on what you said, perhaps, but questioning the dates uh, when you could mail all this in. What, what, you heard what she said. What, what, what do you have to say about the dates? What I would say is it's correct that those ballots have to be accepted by election day. So even though there's a, you know, stop at July 30th, you still have time to put those in the mail. They need to be postmarked by election day. So. You still have time, and as long as it's by, postmarked by Election Day, you qualify. Postmarked by Election Day. So you could vote on Election Day yes. by this uh, ballot, which means we wouldn't necessarily know the result until that mail gets in, unless it's a, a wide victory. So that's Absolutely. But the election, the election commission keeps track of how many absentee ballots were, uh, were sent out, and so until those come back, um, they are able to determine can the vote be cast based on how many ballots have not been mailed in or not. So again, that's why when you get election results on that night, they say they are provisional. It's until the, the Secretary of State doesn't certify election until a couple of days after.
doctor. So they still give leeway and time um, for people to get their ballots in and those votes to be counted. I'm going to go to Reverend Fuzz here. Hello, Reverend Fuzz. I'm really happy to hear from you um, and hope you're doing okay. But what's on your mind, Reverend Fuzz? Hey, Ben, you know what? One of my greatest concerns is that people are talking about, and I had friends concerned that they don't trust the mail-in voting. But the big concern is that we don't even vote. You know, presidential elections, we have black voter turnout at 55%. Most of the elections, especially just black voter turnout, is under 25%. And I'm being nice. If you check the records, it's really 18%. And there's a great, I, I heard an earlier caller who voted every, he's 50 something and voted since he was 18. There are a lot of people like that. No, those people are rare. And I wanna ask our elected officials, how do we increase voter participation and engagement if this, Mail-in stuff will do it, that's great. But the main point that I see causing the problems in our society that people often gripe about is the fact that people do not vote. And I think that's disgraceful. Thank you. Reverend Fuzz, great to hear from you. And uh, again, hope you are doing okay. All right, so you, you heard that representative. His concern is that people just uh, aren't voting. Tennessee has a very low uh, turnout. Uh, so what do you think about what he's saying? I completely agree. I hate that our voter turnout is so low. Um, the fact is Tennessee has one of the lowest voter turnout rates in the country. We at the bottom when it comes to our citizens being able to exercise their right to vote. And it is strictly because they make it so difficult to vote. I mean, we are limiting people's options, as you can see with the universal absentee voting, only being uh, able to be utilized by those over 60. You also have to be registered to vote 30 days before an election. And so you're not able to register to vote and exercise your right to vote on the same day, which oftentimes makes it hard for individuals to vote or dissuade individuals to vote. We are also with this year was pushing a bill to put voting locations on college campuses so that young people could exercise their right to vote and it was shot down by the legislature. I've also been pushing for universal absentee voting prior to this year so that more people can utilize the right to vote. I've also been vocal about automatic voter registration. Just like when you turn 18 years old, you can automatically go into the corner store and buy a pack of cigarettes. Or when you turn 21, you can automatically um, go buy some liquor. You should be able to automatically go vote once you become 18. And so there are ways that we can put things in place to make it easier for individuals to vote. They also been purging the voter system. So people who were previously registered are no longer registered. And when they get to the polls, they no longer can vote. And so right now we need to make sure as Tennesseans and of course me as a legislature is doing everything we can to make it possible for any people to exercise their right to vote. Everything from voter ID laws to not being able to vote absentee when you register to vote for the first time. All of these different barriers we put in place dissuade people from participating in the voting system. And until we can get on the same page and ensure that everybody easily has the ability to vote, then we're going to continue to see voter rights, and particularly in the black community where many of these laws throughout history have been put in place to prevent us from exercising our right to vote. If we have universal absentee ballots in, in these next two elections, the primary and the general, how much higher do you think voter turnout will be overall and in uh, the African-American community? I think it will actually be much higher. I think we can say confidently that the public is disappointed in the way we've been handling things when it comes to the coronavirus. We've seen so many people lose their jobs and they've been so disappointed with the way unemployment has gone, the, their inability to access healthcare services, their inability to access information. And I think people want to be able to voice their concerns about how we've handled this pandemic through their vote. And I think they're more motivated than ever to get out and vote. And so again, that's not one particular political party over the other. I think we people 
want leaders who are going to protect them and ensure they're able to take advantage of the resources that have been promised to them. And the best way to do that is at the polls. All right, well, let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back, continue the discussion. Uh, several people on the line. Hold on. We'll get to your call. We'll take a break. We'll be back right after this.